Welcome everybody to another episode of Finns Nation. I am your host, Louis Sung, and today we're going to be discussing what the Miami Dolphins could do with their post-June 1st money. As of 4 p.m. yesterday, the Miami Dolphins now have an extra $13 million in cap space. And as Mike McDaniel very vaguely said, they intend to make good use of that money. But what exactly does that mean? Does it mean that Dalvin Cook is going to be a Miami Dolphin? Does it mean that the Minnesota Vikings are going to let him go so that negotiation can take place? Or do the Miami Dolphins have something else in mind? There are some options that they can look at, and I'm going to go into just a few of them. But before that, really quick, we just want to go ahead and mention that this show is brought to you, as always, by You Break Wheel Fix. You Break Wheel Fix is the complete automotive wheel solution. If it parks too close to the sidewalk curb, You Break Wheel Fix specializes in the repair of damaged wheels from bends, cracks, and curb rash. Or maybe your wheels are faded or peeling. You don't need to replace them, as You Break Wheel Fix can refinish them to like new. Offering complete refinish options through powder coating, machining, and polishing, You Break Wheel Fix is the answer to all of your wheel needs. And if you're just looking to give your ride a new look, U-Brake Wheel Fix also offers many car customizing options, such as new custom wheels and tires from your favorite brands, performance upgrades, window tinting, and suspension modifications. Located just south of Aventura, you can reach Mark and his staff at 305-748-0112 or online at ubreakwheelfix.com. They are really active on all social media platforms at U-Brake Wheel Fix, so shoot them a DM on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and get an estimate in just minutes. So don't delay, go to U-Brake Wheel Fix and start customizing your ride to show off your Dolphins fandom today. This show is also brought to you by PrizePicks.com. PrizePicks.com is a revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues. Whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each, it's up to you to decide. Just choose whether your chosen player will get more or less on their projected stat. They give you free squares, special Taco Tuesday promos, and of course, today is Flex Friday, which means that you can either get your money back if you lose or multiply the amount of money you can normally win. With offers like that, it's hard to justify not signing up if you are any kind of a fantasy sports fan. So use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. So deposit your $100, let PrizePix give you $100 of their dollars for you to play with before you even have to touch your deposit. Get started winning today. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about some of these ways that the Miami Dolphins can use that $13 million in cap space. Now, obviously, we've talked about the whole Dalvin Cook thing many, many times already. We've talked about exactly what it is that Dalvin Cook could potentially bring to this offense. We've heard opposing arguments from a good friend, Ron Caniff, about how the Dolphins do not need Dalvin Cook because Devon Achain is going to be a superstar. And if he does end up being that, then I will be very happy to have him on the team, obviously. The Miami Dolphins have not had a really, really really incredible running back for a very long time. Now, with that being said, I still am in the camp of making sure that Dalvin Cook gets to come home and try to compete with for a Super Bowl with his Miami Dolphins. As far as I'm concerned, he brings something again to the table that the other three running backs do not. And I would love to have a running back room that consists of four players that at any moment could potentially become the starting running back and do a good job doing it. It's not going to be one of these cases where, oh, our starting running back goes down and then you have somebody like a complete nobody who has to step in and take over from there. So all due respect to Savan Ahmed and all due respect to Miles Gaskin. They are hard runners. They work hard. They have done, they have done everything right. But when you have to win a Super Bowl, sometimes it's just a matter of how much talent can you get on the field at any given moment. And Dalvin Cook has a long reputation of being a thousand yard rusher. And even that's with him starting to decline a little bit as he begins to get older. As Simon Clancy and the three yards per carry crew have pointed out, Dalvin Cook has started to wear down over the course of a season, but that's actually what makes his arrival in Miami even better for him because that means that he's not going to be expected to run the ball 20 times a game anymore. Maybe he gets 10 carries, 11 carries, and he gets maybe 70 yards out of it or something along those lines. I'm throwing some numbers out there, like averaging four yards a carry. Okay, so let's say that for 11 carries, he maybe gets 50 yards. Okay, fine, but that means that other guys like Devon Achain, maybe he'll get five carries carries and he'll get uh, 25 yards out of that. Then Raheem Mostert will come in and he'll get four carries and he'll get 20 yards out of that or something along those lines. That'd be a great yards per attempt, which is okay, good. We have something of a rotation here. It's not one workhorse. It's still a stable of running backs. And Dalvin Cook just happens to be part of it. That will keep him fresh as the season goes on. 
which will allow the Dolphins to be able to have somebody who they can count on in crunch time if push comes to shove. That's the way that I look at the whole Dalvin Cook situation. How much money is he going to demand? I sincerely doubt he expects to be getting something along the lines of what his current contract is. He's not going to be getting $10 million per year anymore. He's not that guy anymore. I don't think he's going to be demanding that sort of contract. I don't think that he's going to have such unrealistically high expectations of himself and his market to be able to say, I want this much money, and if I don't get it, I'm not going to go anywhere. If he wants to come to Miami that badly, he'll find a way to make it happen. And I think that the best way the Dolphins can do it is to say, listen, here's $5 million a year. We'll keep you around for a couple of years. We'll see how it goes, and we'll go from there. And that should be it. If you really want a ring, which I would imagine Dalvin Cook would want, this is probably your best shot. The Dolphins would like to have you, you can come home, you can be happy, and you can just take whatever they give you. You're not going to be the guy anymore. You're going to have to share the football. And at this stage in his career, I think Dalvin Cook should be content with that. Now, now that we've pushed past the Dalvin Cook scenario, let's talk about a couple of other things that we need to look into. First and foremost, uh, there are a couple of players on the team already that require attention. We already know about the Christian Wilkins discussion. Now, I appreciate the fact that Christian Wilkins, he has been a incredible leader on the field, off the field at all times ever since he arrived in Miami. And that's exactly the type of player he was in Clemson as well. He has been the guy who just loves football. You just watch him play and you can see the joy exuding out of his body at any given moment. That's why everybody in Miami loves him so much and why they want him to stick around. It's not just that he's a really good player. He is a really good player. As far as I'm concerned, he's one of the best defensive tackles in football. And last year, if nothing else, solidified that. But the reason everybody loves him so much is because he is so team-oriented in so many ways. Yes, he wants to get paid. Every player wants to get paid. And I expect him to get paid. And I don't expect him to necessarily take a hometown discount for the sake of the team. You have one chance in the NFL to be able to really get all the money that you can. And after that, you're probably not going to get that shot again. But so for Christian Wilkins... He is still going out there. He's in OTAs. He's practicing. He's loving life. He's showing how much fun he can be. He's, he's just, he's a joy to be around. And that exudes into the rest of the team. Everybody loves Christian Wilkins. There is not a single player on that entire team, I would imagine, that does not like Christian Wilkins. If nothing else, off the field. If he's the first guy you want to go hang out with if there's going to be a party because he will be the life of the party. I guarantee you that. But in a responsible way. Not in the sense that he's going to go cause trouble. Christian Wilkins, as he has been a model citizen ever since he got here. And that, above everything else, is why I feel like he deserves it. But here's the situation. He still needs a new contract. Where is that money going to come from? If the Dolphins decide not to go with the Dalvin Cook way, you could potentially use that $13 million dollars to go ahead and say, okay, Mr. Wilkins, let's give you a brand new contract. We're going to maybe front load it a little bit so that way we can get most of the cap space that we have here given to you now so that next year it doesn't hurt quite as much because we're going to be hurting her cap space next season. Now, we can always make more cap space by dumping Emmanuel Ogba and Jerome Baker in 2024. That's always a possibility. We can discuss that another time. But as for right now, they, Mike McDaniel said straight up, we're going to make good use of that money. A good use of that money would be to make sure that you take care of one of your best players, one of your defensive staples. He's, Christian Wilkins is a guy that you want to keep around for an extremely long time because he could potentially be the anchor of that defense for years to come. He could be a legacy player, something along the lines of a Tim Bowens. Everybody remembers Tim Bowens. Everybody loves Tim Bowens here in Miami. He was one of the faces of the defense for so many years, and he deserved it. He absolutely deserved it, and Christian Wilkins deserves the same. Speaking of defensive tackles, now here's a guy who has paired up with Christian Wilkins and absolutely wrecked defenses out of nowhere, and he has earned his money as well. Zach Sealer. Now the thing with Zach Sealer, though, the difference between him and Christian Wilkins is that Christian Wilkins is showing up to OTAs, which, by the way, are voluntary workouts. OTAs, you do not need to be there. And a lot of players use this as an opportunity to say, hey, I'm not exactly 100% thrilled with how everything is going right now. I would like to have a new contract. Whereas Christian Wilkins is literally saying, I'll let my agent take care of that. I'm just going to keep doing what I do here every single day. Zach Sealer, on the other hand, is basically going out here and saying, hey, 
I don't want to come to practice until I'm going to make sure that I get a new a contract. Now, I'm sure once the mandatory minicamp rolls around, he's going to show up and he's going to do his thing. But right now for OTAs, he's basically making it known. I don't want to come and practice until I know for sure I'm getting my money. And he deserves it. Okay. He really does. He deserves to get paid. Zach Sealer has proven himself to be an incredible run stopper. He's been able to get to the quarterback, and he's all, done it all at incredible bargain prices, okay? The Miami Dolphins were wise to swipe him up when they did, and not only that, they extended him to a very, very team-friendly deal. He has outplayed his contract threefold as far as I'm concerned. He's right up there with Christian Wilkins as far as his skill level. He's not going to be as much of a name as Christian Wilkins, but he deserves a lot of money. Now, how are the Dolphins going to rectify that? Are they going to be able to pay him or are they going to let him go in the future and maybe say, well, we're going to try to develop Raekwon Davis and see if we can get away with not paying Zach Sealer? Because the thing with Raekwon Davis, though, is that he is also in a contract year. But if he balls out and he suddenly looks like he's going to be a great pl way to replace Zach Sealer, then Raekwon Davis is going to look at the Dolphins and say, hey, if you're letting Zach Sealer go because you don't want to, you would rather pay me instead, I want that kind of money. So... That's a very dangerous game that the Dolphins are playing. I don't think that they're looking at Raekwon Davis as a replacement for Zach Sealer, but I think the Dolphins might be trying to look a little bit into the future here because at some point you're gonna have to make uh, you're gonna have to make do with the fact that you can't pay everybody. So if you pay Christian Wilkins, you gotta be able to pay Zach Sealer. You gotta be able to pay a lot of players. Javon Holland and Jalen Phillips are gonna be coming up real soon, so you gotta watch out for stuff like that. You have to look two steps ahead. Now, Chris Greer and Brandon Shore have proven that they know what they're doing when it comes to stuff like that, so I'm not going to stress the money of it too much. But as of right now, an, a really good way to be using that money is to be able to pay the guys that are already there. Zach Sealer and Christian Wilkins are staples of this defense. They are the defensive tackle core of this Miami Dolphins defense, and their presence makes a lot of quarterbacks extremely uncomfortable. There's one other dude, though, that is looking to get paid. And he is also not showing up to practice, per reports. And it's Connor Williams. Connor Williams, the center, who was a guard with the Dallas Cowboys and was transitioned to center to the dismay of many Dolphins fans before we saw what he could do. He proved himself a Pro Bowl caliber center. And I actually tweeted it out just not too long ago that it's really a shame that a lot of national media pundits are looking at this Miami Dolphins offensive line and... They're literally saying the only there's there's four slots on that offensive line that are not good. They only recognize Teron Armstead, and that's a crime because not only are you ignoring Robert Hunt, who by the way has been an elite level right guard for the Miami Dolphins, he has been he he's forget him for, never mind Robert Hunt right now, but Connor Williams, he was good with the Dallas Cowboys. He just had some penalty problems, but. When he was the center for the Dolphins, Connor Williams proved himself last season that he's really, really good at what he does. So for them to just kind of look at him and say, eh, he's nothing special. He's not even good, per se. That just shows that they don't watch games of the Dolphins. They just kind of watch a few highlights here and there, and they just watch and see whose name actually comes up in discussion as far as Pro Bowls and stuff like that. Teron Armstead is a perennial Pro Bowler. Everybody knows Teron Armstead. He has a reputation. He got paid like one, and so you know him, and it's easy It's easy pickings, for lack of a better term. To really know who you're looking at, you have to look at the, the offensive line as a whole, and Connor Williams deserves to get paid. He's not showing up to practice. He wants to get paid. And you know what? Again, this is something that I actually said last year. I would have been in favor of extending Connor Williams last season because after seeing what he had done, I was like, you know what? Forget it. Let's just go ahead and extend him now. The Dolphins had him on a two-year contract. This is, his, this is his last year here unless they extend him. And if I'm the Miami Dolphins, all due respect to everything Chris Greer has done. I am not one of those people who looks at Chris Greer and says that he is just not good at evaluating talent. When it comes to the offensive line, though, that's when I have to say, you know what, maybe there's something there. Maybe you're just snake bit, maybe you just have bad luck, or maybe you just really don't know what you're looking at when it comes to offensive linemen. But for whatever reason, you seem to struggle with drafting good offensive linemen. Laramie Tunsil was one, and then you have Robert Hunt, who was the other. But aside from that, you have not had much luck with offensive linemen. You really have not. That's why you had to go out and buy Teron Armstead, who is a known commodity. And also kind of a dented can in the sense that he's really good, 
but he's very rarely healthy. So that can is very dented after all this time. Then there's Connor Williams. He was somebody that you transitioned to center, but he was still somebody else's product. You did not draft him. You went and grabbed somebody else's product that they developed and made good. And then you just moved him to another position, and you guys got lucky and found out that he can play that position even better than the other one. So kudos to you, I guess, for developing him into a center, but that's not your asset. You borrowed someone else's. So the only one that you actually have homegrown and turned into a star and actually kept, because I can't count Laramie Tunsil, because you did draft Laramie Tunsil. Robert Hunt is the only guy that you can look at and say, that is my victory on the offensive line. But how many drafts have you had now? You drafted Austin Jackson, and you're still holding out hope on that one. You drafted Liam Eikenberg, and you're still holding out hope on that one. And now you drafted Ryan Hayes in the seventh round, and I don't know what you're expecting out of that. But if you're hoping that he'll be the one to turn around the narrative that you don't know how to draft offensive linemen, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. So Connor Williams, you better find a way to keep him. He's already playing center. He's not going to be paid. Like even like, look, if you, if you tend to look at the importance level, at least in terms of how the market stands, it goes offensive tackle, guard, and then center. Centers get the least amount of attention of anybody else in the NFL when it comes to the offensive line. Just look at the draft. It took, Creed, it took Creed Humphrey forever to finally get drafted. And the only reason for that is because he was a center. He was not a guard. He was not a tackle. He was a center. And everybody looked at him and said, you know what? You're a center. We can get you later. That just goes to show how much they value that position, which is really sad because Connor Williams has proven himself an elite center. But that does mean that the Dolphins could try to do some leverage here and basically say, well, you're a center, so we'll pay you like one of the league's best centers, but you are still a center. So here's the money that we'll offer you to see if you like that. They, he Obviously, he can choose whether he wants to take it or not. He can try to test the open market. But I would hope that the Dolphins realize the importance of keeping the good offensive linemen you have. I know that Mike McDaniel does not value the offensive line the way that everybody else does. He, looks, he thinks that the weapons are more important than anything else. And to some extent, he was justified in his decision-making because the Dolphins had one of the best offenses in football last season, at least the way that it looked when you were watching them. But you know what? You can't dismiss the offensive line entirely, and Connor Williams has proven himself to be a fantastic player. You cannot let afford to let him go. You just can't. So just those three players alone would immediately eat up that cap space if that's the way that they wanted to play it. Alternatively, if they want, they can actually create more cap space by extending the likes of Connor Williams, and by doing so, they would actually be able to lower his cap hit for this year and make it so that his money goes a little bit further into next season instead. So there are multiple ways the Dolphins could approach this, and if Mike McDaniel is right and they're saying that they have plans to use this cap space wisely, well... We're going to see exactly what that means very, very soon. So that's going to be it. Thank you all so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, make sure you check out You Break Wheel Fix. You can reach out to Mark and his staff at 305-748-0112 and get your wheels fixed if you need to, or you can just give your ride an awesome new look. And you can go to prizepicks.com, use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial sign-up deposit when you sign up using that promo code. Again, today is Flex Friday, which means that if you lose, you can get your money back up to $20. So go ahead and put in a $20 bet. If you manage to get all six of those players right off the bat, then you are $500 richer, folks. And if you lose, you get your $20 back. You have nothing to lose by doing so. So make sure you head over there. Again, the promo code is 5FIVE. Go to pricepicks.com right now and get started. We will see you all next week for the beginning of another episode of Finns Nation.